Hello and welcome on in to day one of ClayshareCon. We are at the end stretch. We've got a few more broadcasts this evening planned for you. Right now we're going to have Chelsea join us from FlexiBats. We're really excited to have Chelsea back with us again this year. She was with us last year and introduced us to FlexiBats. This may be your introduction to FlexiBats. But I have my little collection here and I even have my ClayShare FlexiBat. And I love to use this because it's my logo and I use it on the bottom of my pieces and I think the lights, there we go, might be blowing that out, but you can see it there. I also use it uh, when I want to put my logo on a mug, so it's there and it's actually on the bottom too, but I just had tea in this and I don't want to pour it on my head, so <laughs> should have thought about that before I chose my mug, but Chelsea's going to join us and she's going to share with you a bit about Flexi Bats and how she likes to use them, and if you have any questions, just go ahead and type them in and I will ask Chelsea. So hey Chelsea, how you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. Uh, so thank you for the introduction, Jess. Um, so I thought I would start off um, to help you guys understand a little bit more clearly what FlexiBats are is they're made out of a flexible material. And when you throw on the wheel, you're able to get an impression in the bottom because they work with the mold. Um, and they also, because they're porous, they help absorb some of the water. So I'm gonna actually peel this off and what you want to do is you want to go around the edges very slowly. And you can see that this guy's already ready to pop off. And this is our new pattern. This is our, um, I think it's our deco flower pattern. Um, and you can see that you get a nice foot already on it. Um, and so it kind of helps alleviate some of the work, depending on what your um, throwing schedule might be like. Um, but it's also a nice way to add some decorative work without adding too, too much extra work. I have one more peel reveal to start us off. And then what I was thinking about doing was going into a demo. Um, I actually got a couple emails from um, ClearShare followers with specific things that they wanted me to chat about. So I'm gonna try to definitely throw those in there. Awesome. Uh, so this one is my favorite one. This one is like um, a larger Moroccan print. And again, um, so I threw these this morning. I threw them at seven o'clock. So it's been about 10 hours and they've been drying all day. So they are, let me flip this over for you guys. They are um, leather hard, but the time to take these off is very specific. If you notice, and I'll ruin my pot, it's okay. If I squeeze with my finger, I literally cannot impress my fingerprint or anything on them, um, but I can get a nail in. So it is soft enough to get a nail in, but hard enough that I get no finger mush at all. Um, and again, this one has a nice foot, has a nice pattern, um, and they just, they work while you're on the wheel. So what I'm gonna do is um, I have this one, this is our circle diamond pattern, and I'm gonna, with this one on the wheel and then I'm going to go over some tips and tricks on like while you're working with them and stuff. So I'm going to sit down at the wheel and I'll get myself going over here. So I came up with the idea for these um, when I started to get really busy teaching um, and I wasn't able to, my wheel is not on. I wasn't able to spend as much time on like the decorative stuff that I wanted to. I also found that like I was in the studio a lot, but when I was teaching so much, I didn't get the opportunity to, you know, stay late and make your own work and stuff like that. So these have really helped me add that extra design to my stuff. So what you wanna do is you wanna start with a nice smooth flat bottom. If you notice, I got rid of all of the wrinkles and swirls and everything from wedging. Um, you can do it here, you can do it on a table. Um, but essentially this bat is a stamp and it has a raised puck. So you can think about it similar to a mold, right? Um, so you wanna make sure your clay goes in that mold nice um, and it doesn't start with um, wrinkles or anything because those might show up later on. So the first thing I'm gonna do with my bat is I'm gonna dust it with a light coat of cornstarch. And what this does is this helps um, alleviate any um, excess moisture that's in the clay. And that's gonna help me peel it off later. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna slam it down very well. And I'm going to um, try to aim for the center as best as I can because I won't be able to move it once it's on the bat. 
So I'm really gonna slam and I'm gonna give it a good push and make sure it's really wrapped around the whole thing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get throwing. So I'm gonna move that over there. Um, a lot of us typically, when we need to push our clay into the center, I feel like we have a lot of force at six o'clock with our left heel, it's a very popular way of throwing. Because these bats are flexible, um, you do have to be more delicate with them and you do have to alter your way of throwing. So what I like to do is I like to explain it instead of um, shaping by force, you wanna shape by molding. So if I go like this, I create this nice little cup that's under here and I can still press at six o'clock with this hand and I can still press here with my right fingertips. And then I put them on the wheel and I'm just gonna hang out here and I'm securing my thighs, securing my elbows on my thighs. And I'm not moving um, and my back's not going anywhere. So I have a downward pressure in the shape. I have a little bit too much clay than what I wanted to work with. I'm just gonna scoop that off. Um, I have a downward pressure. My thumb is right on the top. I'm squeezing in this way as I'm kind of cupping my pot around. And if you notice, I already have this really nice shape to start with. Actually, before I go any further, I do wanna talk about the consistency of my clay. My clay is brand new, it's beautiful, it's nice and soft, it's super mushy. Um, it's the best clay you could ever ask for. Uh, but no, <laughs> really, it's perfect throwing consistency. Um, <laughs> we all want that clay. <laughs> <laughs> if, um, if your clay is too hard, think about it the same way as if you were trying to put a stamp into it. It doesn't work. Um, so some of the problems are that people are using, they're using clay that's too soft and it gets super sticky and you get that, like that stick to it. Um, or you're using clay that's too hard. So this is a beautiful, um, brand new, um, V-Mix, um, by Laguna. I love V-Mix. Um, so I am going to cone my piece. Um, I cone and the way that I view coning, and it doesn't matter whether you go this way or this way, you're pushing you want to use like kind of your bones and I kind of push in from two sides and I'm slowly coming up. And as I come up to the top, I release the pressure just a little bit until I have this nice cone. Um, and then I can start to bring my cone down because you, your clay should already be somewhat centered when you're coning, it shouldn't be a wild child anymore that um, six o'clock hand is just um, fine. And I hope that these tips help other besides just the flexi back because finding different ways to center and different ways to do things is always nice. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill my hole. Before I do that, we created these guidelines um, and these are new on the flexi bat. Let me see if this is a nice old bat so you guys can see that there's these really nice engraved lines around the puck. And those are nice measurement lines. So they help you kind of gauge where you are. So I don't wanna go too wide. So I'm just gonna kind of make sure I'm right at those, um, those lines. So I'm gonna drill my hole. I like to use my left hand. I kind of like to use these two fingers right here. Um, and I push more from my elbow. So my wrist is up. Um, this is actually my favorite tip. This is not flexi bat related, but I like to keep my thumb on the donut shape part um, while I'm drilling my hole. And I feel like what it does is if my clay is off center at all, it almost gives a little bit more of a compression and it helps a little bit as I drill my hole. So right here, this thumb rests as I drill my hole and it helps kind of keep it together. But drilling is normal. I'm gonna pull my wall out. After you pull your floor out of your pot, you wanna make sure you compress, compress, compress. Um, your stamp essentially should already kind of be down there, but you just wanna make sure that you get in all those little nooks and crannies and stuff like that. Nice and good. Get up the water. And then I always collar my pot in after I widen and I feel like it builds my walls a little bit faster. Um, and so you kind of start with this little bit of a volcano shape. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my walls um, on my pot. Now, this part is a little bit tricky. And this is something that I do 
definitely like to be a little bit straightforward with. Your bat, it's very easy for it to come off of the wheel at this point. So all you have to do differently, you know how we all do that one really good power pull where things just like move so quickly and it looks amazing? Separate that into two. Just don't pull so hard um, and you'll be just fine. So you, typically I throw my mugs in about three pulls if I'm not using a flexi bat. So I would say for a flexi bat, I usually um, maybe do about four or five pulls. Um, so I have my pressure from my outside hand. We have a question about how do you judge the depth of the bottom when you're yeah bottom? that's a really good question um so you one you get really good at it eventually um but you can try you can practice with the needle tool the same way you normally would so like after you drill after you um drill your hole and before you widen you can stick your needle tool to the bottom and it does feel it doesn't it's not obviously as hard as the wheel but you will feel a different um, sort of solidness compared to the clay. So it will stop your needle tool. Um, and you, you kind of get used to it. You um, throw with the same width and you, you, know, you throw with the same depth over some time. And if you're using a nice translucent clay body, um, I use a, I think it's Laguna 15 or something, but every once in a while I'll use I will go a little thin on a bottom thinner than I wanted. And obviously the design would be thicker and where the design's not as translucent, it's really cool. Um, but so this is just my basic pot that I, I'm throwing on the bat. I am gonna go back in and I'm going to kind of smoosh again that bottom, condense it with my sponge. I'm not a huge fan of the rib tool. I don't think it needs like that much. Um, it's not a plate. Um, and I'm just going in and I'm really getting rid of all of the water with my sponge. Um, we haven't really talked too, too much about drying time yet, but you do want your pot, your pot to dry as equally as possible, like over time, um, or in, I should say as evenly as possible. Um, so reducing the amount of water that's on your pot is a very good way to start. So the next thing you're gonna do, um, and this is the part that alleviates trimming, is we're gonna cut with our wood tool. Actually, before we're gonna do that, what I would like to do, and this is an important step, you're gonna take your sponge, and I like to actually compress. So the part of the clay that goes onto the wheel um, in what, almost like a horizontal way that kind of starts to, starts to like vary off like this and do it with my hands all the way up here. Um, it's called a skirt. So what we wanna do is we almost wanna push that skirt into the pot and by doing that, you're gonna make sure that you're pushing clay into that right angle against that foot. And that's really helpful. So I'm just kind of taking my sponge and I'm just kind of making sure that that area is nice and compressed down there. And then maybe my pot just needs a little collar or two. Because I just altered the shape a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with my wood tool. Um, I actually start my wood tool up at the top because I like to use it as a rib tool and I like to use it as the way that I scrape my slip off, but that, um, that's just preference. So I start, yeah, you guys can see, I'll go to the side a little bit more. Um, I'm actually scraping with my wood tool a similar way that I would my rib tool. And by the time I get to my bottom, I have an okay little chunk of clay that I can take off. Um, and you're pretty much just cutting that skirt away the way you normally would. Now those rings that are on the pot, that's what's important. So you're using those rings as your guidelines to know when to stop. We added three rings. My favorite ring to stop at is the one closest to the puck. I think it gives a beautiful foot for um, a mug or like a cylinder, which is pretty much all I really work with. But what you can do, we've added two other lines that are wider, and those would be nice if you're making, excuse me, if you're making bowls or anything like that, because um, it would increase the width. The pattern would still be the same, but you can also go in and trim away. And um, I wish I could think of her name. Um, it's Marie something on TikTok, and she's fabulous, and she created this double foot on um, 
her flexi back. Let me see if her name comes back to me, but it's a really cool idea. So that's what she's been doing with her wider feet. Um, but so this is pretty much how you would make your vessel on the flexi guy. Um, to remove it, you're just gonna take your back pins up. Now, because it's flexible, and I'm obviously gonna ruin this on, on camera, but that's okay. You can see that your clay wants to warp. So all you have to do is just put your hand under it very casually, and you just need to make sure you support it when you take it off and you're just fine. Um, you people are very used to having a hard bat. So that is something that you, you kind of don't think into like, oh, should have thought about that. Um, so I'm pretty thinking it for you guys, just to let you know. Um, we got some questions before you go too far. Sure. Folks want to know how thick is the bottom? Like what's the perfect thickness for making a bottom with the flexi bats? Um, I would say because you don't have to trim, I would say probably, I don't know, just over like an eighth of it, somewhere between an eighth would, inch and a quarter. I would think an eighth to an inch yeah. and a quarter would be good, right? That sounds like a good... And then another question, do you have them in different sizes or is this the only size that you're making? So right now, this is the only size pop that we're making because there's different rings around it. You can technically, so the old flexi bat, you were stuck with one size foot. So at least with That's this- That's what I got. I got the old. Yeah. I feel like they're old. I still feel like they're new. <laughs> we'll, send you, we'll send you the new ones. Um, <laughs> So with this one, you do have the ability to throw a wider foot, which is amazing. And then you can just go in later on, you flip them over, you give a little tremor ski, and then and you can have And so it opens up. So you're what you can make with them. So you're showing a, a mug, but you can make bowls. You can make anything. Right. You got those yeah. three rings so you can move to larger forms. And that right. was one, I think, of the, the considerations from the older style. Yeah, so, it took a lot of feedback that people had. It was really nice, like everything that people said over the last year, we were able to really like critique and like fine tune a lot of stuff. And I, I wanna let everybody know, Chelsea's doing wheel throwing, but I hand, I do wheel throwing too, but I really hand build more. And I use the flexi bats to hand build and they're amazing for that too. So if you're a hand builder watching this and you love the idea of getting a pattern bottom, you can still do it with hand building. Yeah, oh, actually, my my camera friend, Miss Cat, she made, I'm so sorry, now it's covered in clay. Um, it's only this, but she made the cutest, like, little pinch pot um, cup, and she did this really nice little scalloped foot, Aww. but it has our the flexi bat on. I love that. Bottom, and she started using our orientation stamps around the whole pot um, as just, it. like, little texture things yeah it's like it's kind of like just it's really sweet um so yeah you can definitely hand build with them um I am later gonna take a custom bat that I made for somebody um somebody else um and I'll show you guys what a good custom bat looks like um, and so you're doing custom bats because I know mine is my Clasher logo is a custom you did for me we are so you're um, taking orders so folks I'm only get taking their... a certain amount I'm only going to take 15 at a time um, okay. They do take a lot of work. So they, I, I, they, just, they I know that's not a large number, but they take, once I get those out, we can do a couple more. Um, but if we want to, let me, um, let me rinse off really quick. And I'm just going to let everybody know, Chelsea was just showing us one way to make a mug, one mug shape possibility. Of course, if you wanted to make mugs that are uh, really lots of volume or more tapered, you make your mug or your bowl or whatever you're making, whatever shape you want to do. They can be used for any shape. There's no limitations. Yeah, we were actually, we started using them on, uh, is it GR forms? Yeah. Yeah, so we started, um, we, those are pretty popular in our studio. I'm in the hallway of my studio, by the way, guys, because it's a public <laughs> So I was, like, I was like, I didn't want to interrupt everybody. So I was like, I'll go tuck myself in a corner. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of people that hand build with them because you can roll them into a slab, which is actually what I'm about to do. I'm going to show you guys that next. Um, and then um, you can just build with them however you want to. Um, so why don't we, no, Miss Cat ran away really quick. Let me see. Oh, let's talk about storing and cleaning your bats really quick. So a lot of people had questions on how to store their bats and how to clean them. My suggestion, so you want to start throwing on your bat when it is dry, 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 because you need 
the spongy material to be able to absorb the water. So if your bat's been soaking in water and then you throw on it, it's not gonna help absorb the water from the pot. So washing it off right before you use it is not gonna be helpful. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna wash it. I usually soak it in water, wash it lightly with my sponge um, the day after I peel it off. Then I let them dry for like 24 hours, nice and flat. I usually store them pretty flat. Um, and then I will go throwing with them after that. So I'm gonna, next I'm, I am gonna show you guys some custom artwork um, that someone submitted me. And then I'm gonna actually roll her. I said to her, I was like, can I send you? She's actually a friend of mine, but I was like, I'm gonna send you, your bat's gonna have clay on it. So I'm gonna use it. Um, <laughs> so this was the logo and uh, we do ask that you don't send us obviously paper, but I, I figured this would be just fine for here. Um, so this was the logo that um, she sent me and we had to do a little bit of work to it. Um, but it's a great learning curve, I thought, for today. So it's gorgeous. It has these really nice lines. Her font is nice and thick and clear and bold. It's beautiful. Um, and so what we did, though, I had her resend it to me. And I had her make the lines a little bit thicker around the flowers. Um, and that's why Jess's work so well, because her logo is so clear. And she has these really nice, thick lines around her pot. So we increased the thickness in the flowers. This is also um, backwards because it's a stamp. Um, so when you take a stamp off, whatever you want, whatever words you are, you want us to send them backwards. Um, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap over to my hand building area of my hallway. <laughs> yeah, in going, your studio hallway. In my studio hallway. Um, and I'm going to actually roll her custom stamp out on some clay so you guys can see firsthand what a custom stamp kind of looks like. And so we are doing a promo. Chelsea's doing a buy two, get one free. But that is that going to apply for custom bats too? Probably not. Um, I, I think it should. Well, okay. well I mean, which way? Do you charge? Do you charge more for custom bats? I guess that's they the question. Do. Yeah, so it yeah. should work on all bats. Um, if I'm not sure if custom bats are in our system. So what I'm doing, I used to put them through the slab roller and I actually realized that this one works best. So if you can see, um, we added her name and it's quite large and um, the design shows up. It looks thick on paper, but it really looks nice cut into um, the material you need that extra thickness so now what I'm going to do and I also this bat um, is brand new so there's a little bit of black residue um, all of that stuff is just when it's brand new and it does come out right away so I have a brayer brayers are my favorite um, tool I use them for so many things in the studio um, and I'm just impressing it into the clay in multiple directions so I'm not just going one way, I'm going multiple ways. You could use a rolling pin. I just choose to use a brayer. I don't know why. I think we all have these tools that we just kind of um, use, right? Like they're like our go-to tools. Someone's Whatever you got on hand, right? Yeah, right, you use it. Awesome. So um, I'm just gonna peel this off. And then, oh my God, this looks so good. It's funny because this is the first time I've ever um, done her stamp and I was a little nervous, but if we could take a peek at this. And so you can see- Oh, it's beautiful. And tool up and it has the really nice flowers and stuff like that. Um, so you can, I don't know, just to give you guys like, again, it's nice, thick, bold, large letters and all of that really do show up. Because you have to envision that the stamp and the design and stuff that you guys are sending us, we shrink them down into like, you know, like two and a half, three inches um, to fit. So we have, let's see. Um, I think we already talked about cleaning and storage. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about some added things that we have on our pots. So we had orientation stamps that we were um, already having um, engraved on the pots. And we one of the feedbacks that we got were um, people wanted to use them for other things. 
they liked him for hand building and they didn't like that they were in the corner. They were like, well, I know where my bat is oriented. It was a lot of hand builders. So what we started to do, um, we started to do was we made them separate. So there are these little stickers, they're a dollar. Um, they're literally the exact sticker that goes in the bottom of your, on your foot. And what's cool is you can add this to a piece of wood if you want to use it to a stamp, um, or you can still literally stick it on the bat and use it as an orientation sticker as it was meant to be. Um, but we felt like this was a nice workaround to help the hand builders that wanted to use it a little bit more creativity creatively um, than just to know where like the left or the right side were. So those are some little added features. And what's nice is like, if you, as long as you purchase a bat, cause I think we have like a limit, uh, no, we have a minimum on orders or whatever, but um, you can get a bunch of these and they're really cute <laughs> and you can stamp them into your pieces. Um, and then the other thing that we're doing, so I, um, I feel like grommets got a mixed review in the past. Um, so these are our grommets. And what they do is because our bat is flexible, we've got feedback that when some people were throwing, they would the bats would get stretched out. So we made these like really nice um, hard grommets that fit in. And all you do is you squeeze them into the bat while you work. Um, and that kind of helps alleviate any stretching. I personally don't like the grommets. Um, I just think it's probably just because I've been so used to throwing on these for a while. Um, but so because of that, we're also adding them separately so people can make some choices. So yeah, we tried to, um, I guess over the last year, add some freedom with our product between um, foot sizes, grommets and corner stamps and stuff like that. Um, I do have about, um, I have two more peel reveals. Um, and then what I was thinking is um, if we had some time, which it looks like we might, um, we could probably um, roll some, um, we also have some flexi mats. There are textures and designs that match our, um, the bottoms of our pots. So I can go over and show you guys some designs and patterns on that. Um, it's funny. I, I just want to let some folks know um, Chelsea is doing the deal buy to get one free as the promo and I shared it in uh, everywhere everybody's watching. Um, the link on claysharecon.com under the deals does not take you there. It takes you to Michael Harbridge's site. So if you click on that link and think you're going to FlexiBatch, you're not. So you will, we'll get that fixed as soon as Kevin and I get done doing work tonight. So we'll get that taken care of. But in the meantime, <laughs> you can go to potterymill.com um, slash flexibats, but I've also shared that link everywhere. So you guys can just click on the link I just shared for everybody. So I'm sorry about the uh, mistake with that, but we'll get it taken care of ASAP. And those of you who want custom, have, I'm seeing tons of questions about size of files for custom bat made, reach out to Chelsea for that. And she'll you know, all the information she can get to you for that, for custom, because there are restrictions and you can't, put like you know a thousand word document on the bottom of your mug on your flexi I, let me why don't I you want to go over it yeah like, why don't like, go over that minutes and I think because the customs literally are the questions they just there's so many so your images need to be black and white and by black and white like literally black and white no gray scale in between um and they have to be like a jpeg a png a pdf all of those are fine I can convert any of those files um I cannot convert Microsoft Word or any writing documents. Um, in the past, we've had people send us pictures of their computers or photo drawings that they drew on paper. Um, those are really hard for us to work with because there's a lot of um, shadows and variations and stuff like that. So those are the really big things. Um, even size doesn't matter. I can shrink and enlarge files. Um, so your file size should be okay. Um, and then, yeah, again, like Jess was saying, um, you can't use a, uh, you can't send me something that has a bunch of words or letters because we have to shrink those down in two and a, into two and a half inches um, and then the clay won't stick in. So again, with the, the thistle and tula, um, hers was very simple. And the letters were like large and bold and they really popped on that pattern well. I would say anything smaller than that is a no-go actually. Um, 
But yeah, so, okay, so let's do a couple peel reveals. Um, so I didn't put orientation stickers on any of these because I just thought it would be a surprise. Um, <laughs> we'll see which ones these are. I kind of like that though. Like I go in the studio and I, I just pick four or five pots and then I make them and then it is what it is. So this one, this is our new starburst pattern. Oh, I like that a lot. That's nice. Pretty. Kind of into this little bit of like a retro theme lately. And the flower that was over there. I think we have one more. So again, when you peel your pots off, you want to do it very slowly. And I am going to talk to you guys and notice how I'm turning it as I'm peeling it because I'm not, I'm not just kind of yanking it off. Um, oh, this one's nice. This one's our mandala. So it has a nice mandala on the bottom. Um, again, I'm going to talk to you guys about the texture a little bit. Your pots dry at different stages throughout the piece. So even just feeling this from me throwing it today, um, they're dry and hard on the top and it's still soft on the bottom. So um, part of it is just the way that water evaporates. But like, I, I kind of believe that because of gravity, water kind of goes down towards the bottom of the pot. That might just be me. Um, but I always find that the bottoms of my pot are wetter than the top. Um, obviously they dry because the walls are thinner and stuff like that too. Um, but because of that, you need to, when you're checking for dryness, you want to check where you're peeling off. So you want to make sure like, again, you want to be able to press your nail in, not super easy, but not super firm. Um, and I shouldn't be able to really push my fingers in too hard. And that's when I know that I'm at a good texture to be able to pull my pot off of the wheel. Um, what do we have about 10 minutes? Let's chat about flexi mats. Cool. So we're going to go back to our table. And so Kevin fixed that link on playsharecon.com. So it's fixed. So no problem. You can go in if you're on that. <laughs> But you have to reload the page, yes. Make sure you do that. All right. Um, so we had my okay. Um, we had um, some a couple of people ask if they wanted to be able to decorate the outsides of their pots, especially hand building with um was I gonna say, oh, they wanted the imprints to kind of match the designs on the outside. So we started creating flexi mats. Um, and they work the same way as um, the bottoms would if you were hand building. Um, but so some of them, like this one actually is our lemon. Um, this one's my favorite. This one's our Monstera one. Um, Ooh, that's a great one. Isn't it nice? It makes Very it so nice. happy. Um, and this one is just like a really fun, um, I don't know, like a chevron. Kind of reminds me of Jean for a weird, for weird reason. Um, had, and we have a couple of them. Um, so to show you guys how they work, same thing, we're just going to put them down on the table. We're going to put our clay on the mat. Now these I do prefer to roll through a slab roller. I will be honest, I get a much nicer even um, distribution of pattern. Um, but again, I can't throw shade at my brayer, who's my babe. My favorite tool. I use them for everything. Literally, I use them to smooth out my edges. I'll use them to impress stamps on the sides of my pots. My favorite tool. And um, oop. and so to peel this off, what I like to do, um, I don't, I don't know. It depends on how you guys work with your slabs, and you can do whatever you want. Um, I don't like to peel my clay up. I feel like clay has a memory. And when you peel it up, it is actually going to kind of get that curve later on. So what I do is I take a board and I do the opposite. So I flip it. And then because this is nice and flexible, I can peel my board off of my pot. And then I don't get any of that warping that you would normally get by trying to move your clay off of a stamp. Um, so let me kind of... Um, got, a, got a question from a, someone who has one of the old 
flexi bats, is there a way to add extra concentric circles to the old style flexi bat? So the thing is, is you're still going to have the indent. You can't move that indent out. Yeah. That's kind so of really they are what they are. You yeah. Know, and so the yeah. reason, so the new ones, instead of engraving the foot, what we did was we made a puck for the design. And then, so the puck, because the puck is higher than the bat makes the foot. And that's why you can make your foot as wide as you want um, versus the other one. You kind of, you had what you had, which is what we learned from. And that's why we kind of grew from it. Okay, good to know. And then um, we had some folks asking the buy two, get one free discount um, offer. Can they use it on the mats as well as the bats? So that can they get, or is that just for flexi bats? I don't have that on there right now, but I'd be more than happy to add that if you guys could give me until like 30 okay. minutes after. Some the folks show. just were asking if they could yeah. get mats or, or mix and match, bats and mats. It's up to you. I hate to put you on the yeah. spot. I'm not trying to at all. Just whatever works best for no, you. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. Great. So we'll get that up later. She'll get that up later and uh, get that for everybody. Did you have any more questions or anything? No, folks are just saying they're not finding the mats. If you go to all, if you go to Chelsea's website, potterymill.com, and you go all things flexi bat, the drop down menu will have flexi bats, custom order flexi bats, shop flexi mats. So you go there, and that's where the flexi mats are. So they're on the pottery mill website, just walking everybody through. So yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I love the mats. I think they're a great idea. And I love the peeling the mat off the clay instead of the clay off the mat. Yeah. Um, if we have time, I have one more. I want to show you guys my lemon print. It's my favorite. Oh, yes. We have time for that. Okay, cool. Um, so again, you want to start the mats so that way you have a board to put your stuff on afterwards. So I'm putting the clay on my mat. I'll leave my excitement about my brain to myself. <laughs> you can celebrate inside, right? Internally. I will. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's good to celebrate to everybody. I mean, why not? If you're excited about it. <laughs> about the tool. Oh. Cool. So I'm just giving it a quick run. Um, and then again, you want to take your board because you want to allow for at least warping. Flip onto the board, and then again, peel the bat off. Um, and then we can zoom in on that guy. And, uh, give a nice view. Yeah, so that's my lemon. Um, he matches the lemon bottom. It's my favorite one for summer, which I know it's not summer season. but Well, we're certainly thinking about summer. Oh, my goodness. We Did are. you know that we're getting about 12 inches of snow? So right now it's uh, wind and cold and yeah, so happening. Um, I, had a I had a question. Do you only sell directly on your website or do you have distributors? Um, we have some folks outside the US wanting to know if they have any places they could get them overseas. Um, I think we do actually have a couple locations right, um, right now that we're able to sell overseas directly to them. So unfortunately, because of COVID and shipping rates have gone up, the shipping is like astronomical. Um, so I'm more than happy to ship to anybody, um, but it's just, it's so lousy how expensive it is. Yeah. So let's see, I'm gonna help some folks. I see a lot of people not finding the, uh, the mats. They're not finding the lemon mats. See, flower. Oh, I see. Yeah, I don't see any lemon mats up there either. So maybe you're out right now. So that might be. That is possible. We could be yeah. out of stock on the lemon mats. Absolutely. So just keep in mind that if she's out of stock, reach out and say, hey, when are you going to have some more lemon mats? <laughs> yeah, send us an email. Um, if you send us an email, you go on to our, um, our email list just automatically. 
Um, I promise you, we don't bombard you with emails. You might get one a month at the most, um, but we do let you know when um, promo codes are up or when we get a new design or pattern and stuff like that. So keep you in the loop. Um, you can also follow our Instagram and um, our TikTok because um, we definitely let you guys know when we have promotions and when new things are up and stuff like that on both of those social medias as well. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm I um, see you on, I see your peels on Instagram a lot. Aren't they so, fun? It's like They're the like daily the peel. Part. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy it very much. Good. <laughs> and folks are asking the code. I already shared it. It's also on claysharecon.com. If you go there, you can click on the deals and it's uh, buy two, get one is the code. So. I'll share that again for the folks, all caps. All righty, so any more questions before we go? I don't know if you have anything else you wanted to share, Chelsea? Um, I don't think so. We went over tips and tricks. We talked about the mats. We talked about the bottoms. We talked about the grommets. I think we went over quite a bit. Um, yeah, we did. Yeah, and I guess um, just so people know, always feel free to email us with questions. Um, I have three or four amazing girls that work for me um, and they're always answering emails and stuff like that. So feel free to ask questions. Um, we learn from you guys too when you offer, when you let us know what you're making or what works and what doesn't. We're always looking for feedback. So. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, Chelsea, thank you so much again for another fabulous demo with PlayShareCon. Uh, you know, I've been loving the FlexiBats since I first discovered you last year, and uh, I'm excited that we were able to introduce you to a whole bunch of new folks and get new people trying out some FlexiBats. So I love, love that I have my logo. Um, and so Chelsea did the demo and she was wheel throwing, but you can hand build and you're not limited to just mugs. I hand built this mug. Um, and I already showed it once, but I'm not ashamed to show it again because I love it. There's the, the bottom with my logo. And then um, I use the orientation mark here to make this sticker to stick on the front. And then I also made a little plate. It's not meant to go with this mug, but I guess it could if it wanted to. And this also has my logo on the back. So you can see how great that is because not only do you get your logo, so you don't have to worry about signing, you can get a foot. So it's, it's done. It's all the work done for you. So check out Flexi Bats. I think you guys will really like them. And now she has Flexi Mats, which I think are super cool. So, all right, everyone, we're going to take a little break. We'll be back at 6.00. That 6.30 with Adam Field. He's going to give us a little studio visit and chat, and we're going to talk about, you know, what Adam's been up to lately, and he's got a new workshop coming up with Clay Share, and we wanted to share that, and also just a chance to hang out in a Potter studio is always fun. So I'll see you all back here at 6.30. Then we have giveaways, uh, 15 giveaways tonight. So 15 people are going to have an extremely great